I'm Nathan Tannenbaum. These are just some of the stories coming to the Las Vegas Review Journal. Radioactive remnants from nuclear weapons tests may show up soon in the form of groundwater contaminated by tritium outside the boundaries of the Nevada test site. Since the 1950s, the United States has conducted more than 800 underground nuclear tests at the nation's largest nuclear weapons testing facility, the Nevada test site. Around one-third of these tests occurred near or below the water table, causing some radioactive contamination of the groundwater. To address this issue, the U.S. Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration's Nevada Operations Office formed the Underground Test Area, or UGTA Project, to help us better understand the complex groundwater systems at the test site. The Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration says water in monitoring wells in the Oasis Valley is not accessible by the public and is not a public health concern. Look in Monday's print and online RJ for more on the story from reporter Keith Rogers, including a map. Many Americans harbor hidden dreams of Hollywood glamour. In Monday's print and online RJ, reporter Mike Blasky writes that especially for those up front about their silver screen aspirations, be they in front of the camera or behind, in these tough economic times, apparently a degree in film means even less than it once might have. You'll meet 28-year-old Daniel Jader, a UNLV film student with two bachelor's degrees and a stack of student loans. Speaking of the recession, we're here to unlock another tale of woe in a segment of the economy you usually don't think about much, unless you need them. Locksmiths. Review Journal reporter Alan Schott writes Monday of the Silver State's supposedly tough locksmith regulations and an influx of unlicensed practitioners of the craft, reportedly taking over the phone book and online search engines only to gouge customers with high service charges and unnecessary work. The agency tasked with handling complaints about all this, the Nevada Consumer Affairs Division, went unfunded in the 2009 session of the legislature. Read all about it. Monday brings another edition of the RJ Political Notebook. Molly Ball leads off with a lawsuit stemming from a 2004 Nevada State Senate race in which incumbent Mike Schneider turned back a challenge from Danny Tarkanian, son of the famous UNLV basketball coach Jerry and Las Vegas City Councilwoman Lois Tarkanian. The court action's not about the outcome of the election, but rather about a libel and defamation lawsuit Tarkanian filed over some of Schneider's campaign advertising. You'd also meet the new leaders of Clark County's Republican and Democratic parties. But wait, there's more. Molly does her best to get a jump on what may be an elaborate game of political musical chairs in next year's elections, as term limits will once again knock several familiar names off the ballot from long-held seats. But that doesn't stop lawmakers from running for different offices. One more political notebook item involves veteran political consultant, the legendary Sig Rogich. It's in the RJ, in print and online Monday. Weather. The words, chances for isolated thunderstorms have not been removed from the forecast, but they have been moved out of the Las Vegas area up to the surrounding high country. Of course, anytime there's a mention of storms anywhere around southern Nevada, Mother Nature holding all the cars means we could see rain here in town. But the official Las Vegas forecast from the National Weather Service calls for a hot, dry mix of sun and clouds, with afternoon highs climbing upwards of 107, with overnight lows not budging from the mid-80s. For breaking news 24-7, you're at the right spot. ReviewJournal.com.